Today we have another tiny amp from Tar Amps. What can be so special about this one? We have to stick around and find out. The TL-1500 is a three-channel amplifier currently available on Amazon for around $70. Check links in the video description for the current price. Let's open this up and see what it's all about. First thing you'll see here in the box is this high-level adapter for running your speaker level inputs into this amplifier. Next up, you will see the TL-1500 with all its screw down terminals on one side, RCAs on the other. We'll talk exactly about all the different features, but this is a three channel amplifier, which is kind of unusual. And compared here to the TL-500, you can see the size. I'll leave a link in the video description if you'd like to see the TL-500 video, have it there for your convenience. As far as dimensions go, the TL-1500 5.4 inches on the long side, 4.8 inches for the width, and 1.9 inches on the height. Although this is a tiny amplifier, there are some features here that make it pretty compelling, honestly. First off, the $70 price tag makes it compelling. But here on the one side, you can see the power LED is on the far left, and yes, that lights up when the amplifier is on. Then we have a bass boost, 0 to 10 dB at 50 hertz. We also have RCA level inputs, but the sensitivity is fixed to 320 millivolts. We also have speaker level inputs if your signal be high like Willie or Snoop. <laughs> this is not a Mickey Mouse program. On the opposite side, we do have all the screw down terminals for the power and for all the speakers. We'll show those here individually. You can see the power and ground here, power to the peeps, the minus and the plus. We also have the remote connection in the middle it's called a wired remote. Is that an oxymoron? Well, you figure that out. Also the subwoofer output, low pass at 90 Hertz is built in. Also the mid and high channels, 90 Hertz and up for those, and those are stable down to two ohms. The sub channel is stable at four ohms. As far as ratings, the amp is rated 95 watts times two at two ohms and 200 by one at four ohms being a three channel amp. Now, of course, we're gonna find out what the true power output is Using the amplifier dyno, you can see on the left the power output in watts. In the middle, you'll see the ohm load. On the right, you'll see the voltage of the dyno. I will not be doing efficiency today because the three channel amp makes that complex. This here's my favorite part. Our first round of test here will be the mid and high channels. This is the two of the three channels, and all the other channels will be loaded as well. Four ohm stereo, we don't have any ratings provided but let's try it at one kilohertz and let's see certified to 1% distortion. We get around 52 Watts per channel at 14.32. That's up to 1% distortion. Next up, we'll try uncertified, which takes us to the clipping point. And we're virtually the same 54 and 51 Watts at 14.3. Then the third test here is a dynamic test. We'll send a pulse track of one kilohertz into the amplifier. And again, right about the same, about 51 watts per channel average. Now we'll do two ohms stereo on the main channels, rated 95 watts by two at 13.8 volts. Certified test is gonna take us up to 1% distortion. And you'll notice channel one especially kind of jumped around a little bit. We got 92 and 76, kind of a difference there between the channels, but the uncertified mode takes us up to clipping and it does count cleanly here and we do get that rated power, 98 and 94, so we're right at that 95 watts by two that it's rated. Dynamically, let's send the pulse track into the amp. And again, we're right there at that 95 watts by two. That's good to see. Even though our voltage is just a little bit higher, I think this amp actually did its rated power. Next up, we're gonna try the subwoofer channel. It's only rated at four ohms. So that's what we're gonna test it at. It's rated 200 watts at 13.8 volts, but it's rated at 60 hertz. We're gonna test it at 40 hertz. Let's try a certified test first. We get 170 watts at 14.36. What about up to clipping? Can we get that 200 watts? Here we go, let's try it. Running the test. We're curious. Oh, not quite there. 185 at 14.28. What about dynamically? Can we get this power dynamically? And it looks like we're gonna stay around 185. Oh, it's counting up a little bit. Ooh, it's getting closer. Can it make it? No, 191 at 14.3. Here you can see all the results from all the different tests. We pretty much showed you all of these before. So we didn't quite get the rating 
well, four ohms on the subwoofer channel, but uh, on the mids and high channels, we did get the rated power. Now let's try the sound demo. Make sure you have quality headphones or speakers to get the best out of this demo. We have the tar amps hooked up in three channel mode here to the ELAC bookshelf speakers as well as a Sundown SA 6.5 inch subwoofer wired at four ohms. So let's try some Ice and Fire by King Canyon. Baby, you Try a little kick from Ice Flow. about some straight up bass with the space age hustle. The Sundown six and a half here was wired at four ohms and this amp was pushing it nicely as you can see here. The bass sounded really good. The mids and highs sounded good too. Also, the thermals here did not show anything out of the ordinary. We're in the mid 80s for Fahrenheit on the outside of the amp on the heat sink, and that's uh, not bad at all. So amp did not overheat at all during the test. Next up, we'll get out our favorite precision screwdriver, open up the amplifier to find out what's inside. Let's get in there and find out together. We had an idea based on previous tar amps tiny amplifiers this is a chip class d amplifier we will see the chip here in a minute but here you can see the tiny board tiny capacitors the transformer as well as some chokes and other things there also some transistors there at the bottom for uh, boosting up the voltage because these chips do require a little bit higher voltage and speaking of the chip it's a 3255 it doesn't say texas instruments on it anywhere but the Texas Instruments 3255 is a 315 watt stereo, 600 watt mono. Also will work in three channel or four channel mode. Example here is 150 plus 150 plus 300 for $53 on Amazon. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of things we like, things we think could be better, at least things to be aware of. Obviously a tiny footprint, simple wiring, all the connections are on one side. It's inexpensive at around 70, 75 bucks, not bad at all. You could use it as a full system amp for a basic system. It does have bass boost, low and high level inputs, and the sound quality is actually pretty good. Things to consider, it is a single input for three channels, so it's lack of flexibility there. There is no sensitivity adjustment for the input. Four ohms for the sub channel, don't go any lower than that. There's no remote for sub control, unfortunately, and the crossovers are fixed at 90 hertz. But again, this is a $75 amplifier that will run a full system pretty decent levels for people who don't need extreme bass and don't need a whole lot of power for mids and highs. I think overall, this is a pretty slick little amp and I kind of like it and I like these chips. So until next time, Big D, I'm out of here.
it's a lot, I feel every single day I'll be making moves till I'm buried in my grave To the system, I don't wanna be a slave I've been doing shit my way, uh, or the highway